Welcome to Swifty Travels and today I'm going to take you through the Pecos Mountains and we're going to start at the Pecos National Historical Park. This area has significant history going back thousands of years when the Pueblo Native Americans lived in this area. It goes all the way up through the Civil War. This was a very significant spot. In the 1990s it went from a national monument to a national historical park and now it is very well protected. This area is just off I-25 near the town of Glorieta. This place has major historical significance throughout the years, throughout the thousands of years, this area has been populated. So come along as we enjoy the Pecos National Historical Park. This is a national park, but admission is free. If you want a little visitor guide that shows you what all the markers, you know, the history behind each of the markers on the trail, it's $2. We're gonna start in the visitor center and we're gonna go up the Pueblo and Mission Trail. We are here in early September and it is the most beautiful time of year to be here in Northern New Mexico. I was thoroughly impressed with the visitor center. It was clean, beautifully decorated, with a great variety of gifts. And I, of course, loved the beautiful bathrooms, very clean, with the wood carved doors and the tile countertops. They have a very nice historical timeline that gives visitors an excellent history of the area. From the 1300s to the 1800s, this was the home of the Pecos Pueblo. This had up to 2,000 people living here. This was the largest and most powerful Pueblo in northern New Mexico. And then between the 1540s and the 1680s, this is when the Spanish crown tried to conquer the area. And in 1621, they established a missionary church right on this property. Ruins of this church are still standing today. Between the 1700s and the 1800s, disease and famine had taken its toll on the Pueblo people. The last of the Pecos Pueblo inhabitants ended up moving to the Jemez Pueblo, where their descendants still live today. The Ancestral Sites Trail is an easy 1.2 mile loop that starts just a little behind the visitor center. It's mostly flat with an 800 foot incline to the top of the trail with beautiful views all around. Early September is a beautiful time of year to come and visit this area. If you see all the beautiful yellow wildflowers, blooming all around these mountains. It's gorgeous. Early in the summer this year, we had some of the worst wildfires in New Mexico's history. And since then, we've had quite a bit of rain, heavy monsoon moisture in July and August, which actually caused a lot of flooding in Northern New Mexico. But what has happened is everything is so green and the, wildflower, the wildflowers are absolutely beautiful. So hopefully if New Mexico has a good monsoon season, September would be the ideal month to visit. This site has something on the order of 25 kivas here at the property and this one behind me has absolutely stellar views and it looks like you can go inside which is highly unusual. Usually they don't allow visitors to go down without a guide so we're going to go take a peek. This is a reconstructed kiva. A kiva is where the Pueblo people would conduct rituals and ceremonies and is considered a very sacred space.
apparently this area here was like the local landfill for people that lived here in this area in this Pueblo and the archaeologists have used this area as a great place to find artifacts to date the history of the region. Even though this isn't part of the archaeology, this behind me is a beautiful place to sit and enjoy the views which they put here at this park. This is a lovely park. This is extremely well maintained. I was super impressed with the visitor center as well. It's just a beautiful, beautiful place to visit. Another reason this area is so important over the years is because the Glorieta Pass was the perfect strategic location for protection in this area and it played a key role in the Civil War. Uh, some of the key battles were here as well and with the Pueblo Revolt also had a lot of history in this area. So this um, area is at 7,000 feet and as you can see it's the perfect pass in between the two mountain ranges that you can see all around. In 1625, the Franciscan missionaries built this church near the Pecos Pueblo. The buttress stone foundations are the only visible remains. During the Pueblo Revolt of 1680, they burned down the church. Thirty different pueblos joined together in a successful revolt, in fact the only successful revolt against the Spanish Empire. The church that stands today was completed in 1717. This was rebuilt on the rubble of the church that was destroyed during the Pueblo Revolt. The National Park Service actually protects the original adobe walls by encasing them in new adobe veneers. This ensures that the original bricks that were placed in the 1600s are actually preserved and will remain intact. The structures that are built over here next to the church is called the convento. This was actually the area that housed the priests and the mission activities that supported the church. So if you exit like we did right here by the church, the building you end up is the headquarters, uh, like the park ranger headquarters. So we have to head back down the road to get to the visitor center back where we started. It's a really lovely trail back to the visitor center. Now we're gonna go explore some of the Pecos Mountains that's nearby. We did spend some time camping there in previous years. I've heard that the area just opened this past Friday from being closed from the uh, largest wildfire in the state's history. Starting from the Pecos Historical Park, you basically head north through the town of Pecos all the way up 63. And on this day, we went all the way up to the end of the road, the Jacks Creek Campground. So here's something new since the last time I visited in the Pecos, several areas are now designated as state park. What I didn't know is that the Pecos National Forest just opened back up to the public last week. And I also didn't know that they've just created a state park. So various areas along the highway in the Pecos are now dedicated areas of a state park. You kind of come in and out of the state park as you drive down this road. Some of the campgrounds are now designated as New Mexico State Park. This is the 35th state park and is currently under development. The Calf Canyon Hermit's Peak Fire, which was the largest fire in New Mexico state history, burned just on the other side of the mountain from this canyon. There were several signs saying that we were entering a burned area and to watch out for fallen debris and flash floods. So the hillsides are still quite unstable from the fires, but it is back open and this is what it looks like today. This area right here is the turnoff to the Holy Ghost Campground. And as you can see here, this area also enters the state park. There's a cute little bridge here and beautiful river access.
The next stop is the turnoff at Cowles Ponds to Windsor Trailhead. This trail is 13 and a half miles out and back and it takes you to the top of Santa Fe Baldy, which is 12,632 feet elevation. This is also a popular fishing spot. There's several campgrounds in the area here as well. And now just three more miles to Jack's Creek. This beautiful area is Jack Creek Campground. This is the last campground on that road that winds all the way up through the Pecos Wilderness. This is a fantastic campground. I haven't been here since the kids were little, and I was kind of curious what it was like after the wildfires that this area has had um, this past year, and it's still pristine, and it's Labor Day weekend, and there's many, many open sites, which is surprising. Maybe people think it's still closed, but um, this is a fantastic, campsite and there's many um, spots and there's many hiking trails in this area so it's just lovely and it is only ten dollars a night to camp here Right off the side of Highway 50, before you turn onto 63, it's very easy to miss. There's a little turnout and there's a memorial here to the volunteers that helped fight against the Confederate soldiers and the Battle of Glorieta Pass. It's easy to miss. We actually missed it on our way into the monument and now we're headed back towards Santa Fe and we noticed it along the side of the road. So keep your eyes out if this is something you wanna see and check it out. It's a nice little memorial here.